Welcome to the Habitual Woman Podcast with yours truly, Debrina Wright. I'm a holistic, habit-based lifestyle coach, nutrition educator, and fitness trainer. This is a show about transforming habits into a lifestyle. We will introduce and reintroduce habits, as well as have a conversation with women about the habits and the rituals they use to live the life that they deserve. Now let's get into today's show. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, ladies. Welcome back to yet another wonderful episode of the Habitual Woman Podcast. Today's guest is equally as amazing as the previous guest. I have my girl Jamila, celebrity vegan chef in the house, and I'm so excited because we didn't just talk about food, but we talked about shower meditation and solitude and getting grounded and going outside and retreats and and fashion and flyness. Like It was good. It was great. I can't wait for you guys to dive in. Let's go ahead and make that happen now. Good morning, ladies, afternoon, evening, whenever you may be watching this lovely, lovely or listening to this lovely podcast. I am so excited with today's guest. Lord Jesus, y'all don't know how long, how long I've been trying to connect with this woman. We connected. But like, y'all, I see her like moving. I see her face. I can hear it. It's amazing. I have Miss Jamila of Earth candy in my world back how long I've known her has been earth candy art because of my t-shirt that we need to rebuy yeah yeah uh, yeah remember that it was it nuts seeds and fruit yes yes that that ah. yeah so that's how far back I go so I'm excited to have her how long has it been since you've had that shirt out oh wow I'm gonna say it has to be a good five six years that has yeah. been out. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a minute because I my fact, I, got, I got that when I was in Boston. Yeah, it's been five, six years since I'm mm-hmm, back in that shirt. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and that's how I, how I came across you. Just, I don't even know how I came across that shirt. Probably Instagram in its early infant stages or something uh-huh. like that. T-shirts uh-huh. dope. It is literally one of the shirts and images I still use today with my marketing images. I don't know what the shirt's at, but... <laughs> <laughs> It's been a while. Oh, the have relocated. About that yeah, we got we got to bring that one back. I don't know. Yeah. That might have to be a an exclusive just for my, me and my crowd. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with it. <laughs> but that one. But that's how long. And with that finding that shirt, I was able to dig and dive into your recipes and what you do. And I was like, okay, this is vegan. Like everything you were posting and all the food looked absolutely amazing. And I was like, this, this is vegan, y'all? I was like, this, this is vegan? <laughs> I can't believe this is vegan. Okay, so you said this is vegan. Okay, so there's no cheating in it, in it is? No, this is vegan. Okay, so I was hooked. You had another shirt I ended up buying for a friend. I love vegan food and trap music. That one right there. Uh-huh. That one right there. I had to add a friend who, who went vegan. And I was yeah. like, let me get her a little incentive and a little little gift for, for what uh-huh. she's doing because you know that's that was our world I wasn't vegan but I'm you know clean eating health coach nutrition and stuff like that so right. definitely motivate and want to you know that's a big decision it can be yeah yeah I you know I knew her from high school so I I, I know how we ate I know what we did we uh-huh. ran track together and we were so pretty good but again you just for her to switch to that I was like that's a big deal so Definitely uh-huh. wanted to show love with any type of token of appreciation. Uh-huh. Wow. You're such a good yeah. friend. Encouraging <laughs> friend. Hey, <laughs> for those who are worth it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then wanted to connect with some of it. I was like, I need her to cook at an event or something. And so just shifting and just moving around. And now, you guys, it's, it's going to happen. It's, it's, it's coming. Yeah. We have some talks oh, happening. Sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it'll be virtually, and then we're going to go to in-person because we I, I need to get her plate, her food. <laughs> so just be on the lookout that that is happening. Either habitual coaches coming to ATL, Mila's coming to, to Cali. We're not going to Vegas. We got to go to the beach somewhere. 
So yeah. Oh, oh yeah. See, you didn't say yeah, the magic yeah, word yeah. beach. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. and then she started doing retreats, y'all. I done lost my everlasting mind. <laughs> so now that you know how I know her, why I love her, I'm going to let her introduce her. Who are you and what you, what oh you do? Oh, gosh. Well, what can I say after such a wonderful introduction? <laughs> Jamila Crawford Peku. I call myself a lifestylist. Uh, my company is called Earth Candy, and the moniker is Food Fashion Flyers. So I like to think that those three words kind of encompass everything that my brand and essentially my lifestyle is about. The food component is that I'm a chef, a vegan chef. I have been since 2004, I would say. I kind of stumbled upon this facet of my life, being that I was asked to contribute a dish to a potluck that some girlfriends of mine in Brooklyn, New York, it started in Brooklyn, New York, Two girlfriends of mine owned a boutique. Every fourth Sunday of the month, they would host a customer appreciation brunch. So mm -hmm. they would ask all of their friends, hey, will you, you know, contribute a dish to this potluck? We were all like, sure. It just so happened that my dish would be the first to disappear on the table. So they were like, well, would you consider catering the whole thing? I'm like, well, sure. So what started as me contributing a dish to a potluck turned into me catering this brunch turned into word of mouth spreading and I started catering for all types of events and for all types of people from uh, A-list celebrities to everyday families. And it's, it's, it's been quite a journey. So that's the food part. Fashion, I style people, you know, whether it be print ads or video shoots, I do set design, I do home, like interior decor. That is the fashion aspect of uh my brand and flyness is everything else, like travel. And yeah, yeah. And whatever, you name it, it's gonna be under her flyness. Dude, so I didn't know that you styled people. First of all, I mean, I did, her, yeah. you need to check out her Instagram. It's ridiculous. I mean, Thank she you. styled herself that, that enough. I don't know how <laughs> many you. them images are saved in its own collection. <laughs> in my, my quote unquote photo shoot collection of inspirational images. So, <laughs> yeah. You. So that definitely makes sense that you, that's part of what you do because it's, I love it. Like the aesthetics of it all, the color, the shade, like everything. It's, 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 it's real. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And that's what Earth Candy is about. It is just essentially me just letting the world in on my, my good thing. Like it's, it's, it's like a experience. Yeah. 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 I like how you <laughs> And it's so funny because even like the images alone, the food, the images, of the flyness is like, and besides the fact that I just know you good people, it's like the main reason like I need to be on one of your retreats. Cause it's like, oh, thank you. I'm a photographer. <laughs> so I'm like, I want them pictures and, and like, I want to be able to have someone capture what, what the experience that's happening. Like without me having to pause or stop to try to capture myself. So we kind of like mm. jumped ahead, but it's just one of those things that, yeah, like it's, it is, I definitely love the feel and how I feel looking at it. I don't. Well, thank you. You know, I it's a real woman that, okay, let, thank you. let's, let's say that, that. It's, it's, a, okay. it's a real woman in the images. So it makes, I feel like it makes all of us comfortable. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Like, I like to think you can see me and like feel me through these images. I know, you know, oftentimes people flex for the gram or do it for the gram, but like, this is really who I am and what I do. And I'm glad it resonates with you and with others. Cause um, it, it just, you know, like I said, I'm, I want to let you in on, on some of my goodness. I do some great things and I'd love to share it with others. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I'm just going to jump right into some of the meaty. For, actually, before I jump into the meaty, Again, yes. I want to congratulate you. There will be a giveaway, you guys, in some way, shape, or form. I'll be sharing the recipes. But tell me about this, this lovely cookbook that you done dropped. You know, I've always, since I started cooking, I um, was like, well, let me, you know, compile a cookbook. Let me share recipes with others. I can't be everywhere at once holding cooking classes, so why not just compile it? and teach you how to do it through 
my cookbook. So I just decided to finally document my recipes there because, is. you know, it wasn't, I, I am not that much into measuring ingredients and stuff. You know, the spirit of my ancestors tell me when to stop, you know, what I'm saying? all day, all day. <laughs> so I just shake, shake, shake until I hear that voice. You know, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Look, I'm not. You, we know you just look. Unless it's bacon, there's really no after season. Ah, let me just tell you what. <laughs> but um, so I, I started taking it seriously and started really formulating like recipes and taking note of measurements and stuff, so I can be able to share it, share my recipes as accurately as possible. And yeah, after about I don't know fifty or so recipes, I can't remember how many I have. And there, I was like, yeah, let's, let's, there's a lot of book form. And, you know, really, Sabrina, it's a form of legacy for me as well, because who wouldn't love, in terms of my family, to have grandma's recipes that, that's in a uh, physical form. So this is something that I did with, like, my granddaughter in mind. Like, it's dedicated to her. This is for her to hold on to that she can, like, pass on to our future generations. And I mean, the though the cookbook is for everybody, If you're creative or, you know, if you do have that cooking gene within you, just know that my recipes are like a launching pad for you to do whatever you see fit for the recipe. For example, I have a raw vegan strawberry cheesecake and it was say you don't do strawberries. Hey, I want that to be a kiwi cheesecake. Go for it. You know what I mean? So think of it as a launching pad for you to like add or take whatever you want from this base recipe. Got you. So there's definitely room for interpretation. It is room for interpretation. All of that to say what you said in those five words. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. but you sometimes you got to explain it. They're like, what that mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, and then I like the fact that you also go into, you know, you let them know how to actually create a vegan pantry. So yeah. I might not be going strictly vegan, but if there are some dishes and some stuff I want to do, what do I need to have? What are my staples? So I like that that's yeah. there. And again, vegan sources of protein because a lot of that gets mixed up in regards to even vegan and vegetarian so Mm -hmm. understanding the difference of those sources of protein because that's a big thing people like well how i'm gonna give me some protein if i'm vegan that's that's the favorite question as soon as they hear you're vegan they want to know about your protein intake so there you have it there i have a whole comprehensive list in there of the sources the vegan sources of protein as well as the vegan pantry yes something that you can always have on hand that you know you can grab and whip up a dish right, right quick. What are some of the, the staples, something like right off the bat that you like, okay, for vegan dishes, you, you should have this, this, this. I would say I would always keep kale on hand. Like kale salad is my absolute favorite thing. So I would mm-hmm. always want to have like some, some kind of green on hand, kale being my favorite and, and seasonings. Like just as long as you have the appropriate seasonings, I always have, Sea salt, cayenne pepper, maybe garlic powder on hand. If you have that holy trinity, I think you can do some stuff. You know, that's the holy trinity. Okay. (laughs) That's what it is. So season, just have those three and then you can get somewhere. And as far as staples, I would always keep maybe quinoa on hand and all purpose unbleached flour. You can take that in many directions as well as red lentils. I keep red lentils on hand too. Now, the, all, all of these together don't necessarily make a dish, but these are things that I can have like in my pantry, in my refrigerator, in my cupboard that can get me some places. Yeah. I keep bread lentils in the form of pasta. Okay. Because that's, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, to try to have my gluten-free pasta, I'll yeah. use the, it's the red lentil spiral so I get at Target. The seasons, seasons on dead. That, or get it easy. So, you know, if you want to make it even easier, but, you know, you may want to add a subtract you know particular season and stuff yeah i break it down and i shop at a place that um has you know sell seasonings by bulk so i like to just grab however much i need you know at any given time so you keep them like in jars i keep them as some of them are in jars the ones that i keep like for a longer duration Mm -hmm. of time but the smaller ones they usually come in these little like i don't know container like the containers that they have at the store ready for you yeah, yeah. Again, and then I can press them at home. But sometimes I keep them in those uh, containers because I'm about to run out of it in a couple of days. So, okay. No, huh? Okay. <laughs> I love she your face right now. now. <laughs> Girl, because I'm, I'm a mess. 
Imagine <laughs> breakfast right now. Breakfast at your house right now would just be so. Sad. You know what? You cook very savory, very very savory dishes with what yeah. I love. A comfort. Di- oh my god, the yes, comfort a dishes. Of a lot, lot of love, music, and dance in the family. Yeah. Um, <laughs> with your meals, you know that it, it's definitely infused. What are your? You mentioned your your vegan strawberry cheesecake. What are your other kind of like sweet? dishes for those who who have a sweet tooth what what do you got for us so i do have there's a raw vegan cheesecake in there i also offer a raw vegan german chocolate brownie recipe (gasps) as well as basmati rice crispy treats that one i gotta try Mm -hmm. and that actually might happen like low-key this weekend like that one Mm -hmm. it's so good Ooh, i'm gonna have to revisit that too i haven't had some and also right you got you got me (laughs) thinking like about things I haven't indulged in in a while. And you can also satisfy that sweet tooth by some of my juices. I have a fusion aid, a drink oh. that I call fusion aid. Oh. There's a green featured. ginger, the sweet tea. tea. I'm so ready. Biscuit tea. Yeah. So which is my everything. Things in there. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. okay. I'll, yeah. yeah. We'll be, I'll be cooking in a stirring in the front. All right. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll be I'll be making me some stuff and, and sharing it. So I'm excited. And you do virtual cooking classes. They can <laughs> sign up. Yep. For that as well on my website, earthcandyarts.com. Okay. Okay. So I'll do. We'll drop them links and share them. Because, you know, y'all need to get y'all a piece of this. Don't be, <laughs> don't, be, don't be slipping. So here's another question. So in regards to the style of eating, cooking, the lifestyle, because that's really what that is. And just what, what you're doing, what you bring to the table, what are habits that help you stay on track or that just keep you grounded? You seem very, very grounded. So I try to my best. But you all over the place. I can't be all over the place sometimes too, but I, I yeah. work really hard at staying grounded. And so the things that help me, I have like a ceremony like cadence to like my routine. So every morning when I wake up, after like kind of stretching a bit, what I would do is I go downstairs and I open the door to my house just to kind of just give the house like a breath of fresh air, if you will. And I Mm -hmm. would sage, I would sage my doorway. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so from there, I would just kind of walk through the home and just let the sage just kind of wave through the home. And as I do that, I stop by my altar. I have an altar in my home that pays reverence to my dearly departed, my Mine and my husband's, you know, dearly departed. We stop by there and just kind of take a look over it and just walk it through the house. And after I do that, I sweep, which is a form of therapy for me. Sweeping, just the back and forth, you know, just quiet, just sweep my kitchen floor for a little bit. And then I go turn on some music. I have a sound system in my home. So I go ahead and turn on like some soft music for the house. And that sets the tone for my day. I love that. That's definitely a way to wake up. But it's, I love it because yeah. it really is preparing you and your home. Exactly. For the day, for the energy and just what's, yeah. what's going to happen through the day. Yeah. You know, because I wake up before many people in my home. And so by the time they wake up, they're waking up to like the sage in the home and listening to whatever's playing in the background. So, you know, they, they wake up into this vibe that I would have created. I've, I've kind of like set a narrative for the home, if you will. I treat my home mm-hmm. like an adult. I do have an ancestral altar. Like I like to think of my home as an altar in itself. Every space within this home is is sacred to me. And I try my best, my very best to treat it as such. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny because we're the we're the same way in our house. Um, it's very much honoring all spaces. We are a open windows, you know, morning sage. I'm already sage in the morning. I walk out of my room and I can smell the sage from the, from the other rooms. You know, our like if my sis, if she's already done the living room or come through the house or, you know, she's opened up the screen door to let the air in. So it, it, it is, I totally get that. Ooh, There's altars everywhere. That. Yeah. yeah. Handles and that. oil. So it, it is. Yeah. Just, you gotta feel right. I'll, you know, I'll yeah. have some meditation. You live in it. It's your space. You have to make it feel warm and like homey. It's, it's your sanctuary. So I part. feel that 100%. Okay. That, definitely great habits to have. Yeah. And I love that pretty much every woman who I've spoken with, their habits really start with the intentions and the setting for the day 
Mm-hmm. Right. That is that is so phenomenal. So now that we know how you honor your food, your space, mm-hmm. right? Tell me, because I'm just eager and I'm just like excited and about to jump out my skin. <laughs> how did you shift from catering the food, mm-hmm. the fashion, the design to retreat? Yeah. So retreats. Add that was a, a serendipitous facet as well. It all started maybe in 2018. A woman who lived in Martinique reached, well, no, first she posted a portrait of mine that my husband posted. So it's like she reposted and tagged me. I noticed it. So I'm, I'm commenting, like, oh, you know, I know that woman, and we're giggling about that. She's like, yeah, this is an awesome uh, portrait. You should come to Martinique. She lives in Martinique. She's like, you should come to Martinique. I was like, oh, I would love to. She's like, perhaps we can host a retreat together. I am a yoga you know, teacher. You're a chef and you travel. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. maybe we can do something here. You're welcome to my island. I'm like, oh, that sounds wonderful. So this conversation happens in February. After just you know, a couple of exchanges and FaceTimes and stuff. We're like, okay, we're going to do this March. We put out, we released advertisement for this uh-huh. retreat and we sold out by June. Uh-huh. By June, she and I together and we're hosting this retreat and it was wildly successful. So that's how I got into the retreat part of my brand. And after that, I hadn't done it for a while. I started doing my own like individual travels and it wasn't until last year when I, <laughs> okay, check this out. I still wasn't into like retreats. I had gone to Puerto Rico last year and everywhere I go, I like to take pictures of where I am, you know, the surroundings and stuff like that. So after coming home from my trip, I was looking through my photos and I saw one photo that just looked so peaceful. If I do say so myself, I was just kind of lounging in this palm tree and I was like, hmm, this looks like an advertisement for a retreat. So let me just do a mock of a flyer for a retreat uh-huh. and see uh-huh. what it looks like. And I was like, oh, this looks good. So look, you see, look, this is the process of manifestation. Okay. There it is. Uh, I, I do this. I look at it. I'm like, it looks good. Would I actually host a retreat? I did enjoy the first one. Hmm, maybe I should. Let me put it out there and see if this sticks. I put it on my social media to see if anybody was interested and boom, they started buying it up. I was like, okay, I I think I have a thing here. I did end up what I posted in January. It may have sold out shortly thereafter because I hosted my first solo retreat uh, March during the spring equinox. I was Mm -hmm. like, all right, I I think Mm -hmm. I have something here. So now I'm hosting retreats every equinox and every solstice. I'm holding a retreat in some part of the world. March and June being Puerto Rico. September, I'm hosting a fall equinox retreat in Tulum, Mexico. And Mm -hmm. December, I'm going back to my beloved Puerto Rico for the winter solstice retreat. That I'm so glad you're considering. Uh, Damn no, I'm coming. (laughs) Oh, you coming? I'm coming. This is this is ridiculous. (laughs) Because yeah, because yeah. (laughs) Yes, that's, you that's like join. the best way to, to wrap up my and they do you guys i'm telling y'all for y'all who are listening many retreats will have passed already <laughs> and sold out get get in on the no get notifications whatever you need to do so when she announces that yes. that is open y'all need to be ready to jump in and jump they on join her retreats yes. sell out they do and i'm so Please. grateful for that it's is yeah. is surprising and i'm humbled And I'm grateful that these women like trust me to like host them and to care for them, you know, for such a auspicious time. Because again, well, well, not again, but the moniker, like the subtitle for my uh, retreats, if you will, is reboot, refresh, restart. So every season, like I try to keep them seasonal. And Mm -hmm. so every season is a chance for you to just kind of reset yourself, to decompress and reset. And I'm here to hold space. For that, so I'm honored that those see the good and what I'm offering to them. It makes me happy. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it is. And I'm totally into the 
the aspect of definitely, and like you said, it's with the equinox and the solstice. I'm the same way. Like I always want to offer something at that change and that shift. It is yeah. a time to, to refresh, recharge, yeah. renew, rebirth, yeah. like all exactly. of that. Like, all of that. So society has us thinking January 1, right? Yeah. Like, but think throw about that shit out the window. What does it look like? It's the coldest day. It's barren. Like what? You know, like why? It's barren and stuff. So like, uh, is yeah. it really? <laughs> right? Is, is, is it? So, but not, why not follow what, earth is giving us what you know right. what i mean what it's telling us follow those signs and, and flow with it naturally yep. so yeah the seasonal changes is it happens like think about like first thing spring what do you do spring clean right uh-huh. You, uh-huh. you start over you a lot of times for for me honestly yes. that time of the year that's quote unquote that's my j1 that's the new year for me yeah. you know and again you, you'll hear this all the way around i might be a little arrogant with the whole aries thing but I'm just saying that's that season, that window is really a a reset for the year. That's that's kind of when that real astrological reset happens. Because if you think about it, as when you're spring cleaning, yeah, Aries starts reset. off the yeah the mm-hmm. astrological yeah. That's and true. so that's when people go hard after their passions. You know that's that's that drive. So you do that, mm-hmm. and then you know mm-hmm. summer. That's a whole nother shift, and then fall. That's a whole nother shift. Exactly. You know, like it's, so fall in love with that. So that's great. So in regards to the retreats, what type of rituals do you do yourself to get ready or that you embed into the retreats? Well, I just treat the retreats. I just like to think to myself, what would I want to experience if I were being posted at a retreat? So without giving away everything. That I know, I don't do, do that. I just, uh, yeah, yeah, because I, I, I like to you know, do. I'm some, the same way. You got to have some <laughs> problems. <laughs> Um, Some stuff is I personal. Just make sure, I just make sure I just invoke all the senses mm-hmm. when they, you know, arrive from the food. I make sure the food is good. I make sure it smells good. I make sure our lodging is in a place that is like visually stimulating and, you know, sound, always making sure I curate sounds that are like appeasing to the, you know, ears and ultimately body and just stuff like that, give or take out telling every single thing just yeah. just know that you're in for like a wonderful treat you guys you understand right now i want to do a <laughs> cartwheel <laughs> oh that is my language and we go see I some places that. like you know we just get in touch with nature like honor the earth air the fire water there's always those natural elements and those components are with us no matter where we go and um yes it's just a good thing man it's just it's 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 really exciting Okay. <laughs> and I won't drag you from point A to point B. Like, so don't feel like, you know, I don't have this jam packed itinerary where we have to do something every second of the day. And come on, Debrina, it's three o'clock. We got to go, you know, to blah, blah, blah. No, we, we take breathers, you know, we do things and then we chill. And there's magic in the chilling too, as we sit and we come yes. and we converse with each other. Like, this is all part of the decompression and like, healing and the sisterhood of the retreats that I, I cherish. It's, it's so beautiful to be a part of and to witness. That's, yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> I am. I, I'm just, I am. I'm excited I'm like, too. It's just the, the, the vibe of it all, right? It's just, it's so necessary. So necessary. Okay. Now, so then here's, here's a question that came mm-hmm. to mind. For those who, for whatever reason, aren't able to attend a retreat such as mm-hmm. this, what are some things that you would suggest that they can do in their own space to create a retreat? That is an excellent question. It is something that I have been nudged by friends to kind of elaborate on so for instance as I told you like my morning rituals well I'm thinking you know a way well I know of a way but just sharing like compiling everyday things you can do to make your life as a retreat as you say or you know no need to really call it a retreat because this is now incorporated into your lifestyle just things that you can do and say every day that can feel ritualistic like a ceremony 
if you will, mm-hmm. just ha- ceremonial habits that you can incorporate into your life. Am I diverging from what was the question? <laughs> so <laughs> no, did I go off on a tangent? <laughs> no, so with that being said, what what would that be? Like what type of ceremonies are oh. what oh gosh, shower meditations. You know, the temperature mm. that you use within the shower and the things that you say to yourself or the things that you envision being washed away along with the water as you're in the shower. The art of moisturizing. As you moisturize your body, really take the time to feel your fingers and your wrist and, you know, your arms as you moisturize yourself towards your heart. You know what I mean? Your center, the smell that's in your, you know, your oils, you know, make sure it's like a organic mm-hmm. natural oil. You know, it's, it's things like this that you can do. Just kind of make everything you do into an art, the way you shower, the way you moisturize, how you cook, how you write your grocery list, you know, the way you might place your books on a mantle, like just, just kind of beautify everything that you touch. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. And it's, okay. it's funny that you, you say that. I'm really big in, in the fact that you so eloquently put it, the art of moisturizing. Like that is a, a thing for me. I take that moment to be in tune with myself, appreciate my body, love my body. For women, check out our body you yeah. know, and see for things. But just really just it is. It's the aroma. It's the smell because the time of day, if I'm doing it in the morning, I'm going to have something more uplifting. So it might be some mm-hmm. orange or citrus, peppermint, yeah. something that's going to wake me up and, and get me on with my day. If it's evening, it's definitely going to be chamomile, mm-hmm. lavender, yeah. you know, it's the tea, baby, you know, so tea gangly, you know, ro- type of teas, you know. Yes. Some yes. The herbs that, you know, make you feel a certain way. Yeah. Yeah. So, Oh, well, that's what Earth Candy is all about. You know what I mean? Life is art. Art is Earth's candy. So therefore, my life is Earth candy, literally. Got you. Got yeah. you. Got you. So before we wrap all this awesomeness up, three tools that you feel that every habitual woman should have. Three things. That she should have or that she should do. Whatever. Whatever. I would encourage solitude, like alone mm. time to like recharge, you know, how, when you're on a flight and, you know, you're listening to the flight attendants telling you to secure your mask before you Mm -hmm. help others, like make sure you are good first. I'm proponent of making sure you are charged and you are taken care of before you help others. Because if you start depleting yourself in the name of helping others, where does that leave you? You know what I mean? So I encourage anyone to just take time for yourself to do whatever you want. I love having lunch for one or tea for one, or I'm just kind of cruising, you know, just kind of joyriding by myself because I like myself and I like my thoughts and I want to get a chance to experience them without having children yelling in my ear or having to be responsible for children eating, you know, at a particular time and stuff. It's just a way to just kind of just tap back into myself. Okay. A second one is, ooh, I think I kind of mentioned it. I'm going to go back to really just kind of pampering yourself. The art of the, you call it the art of moisturizing, like, you know, taking the time to just kind of love yourself and just kind of when you moisturize yourself, like do it with the luxurious oil and butter and just really feel, you know, it's just getting a little... (laughs) <laughs> a little sensual, but I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's an art. Just really just rub yourself and just, you know, affirm yourself and just care. You know what I mean? I, we, yeah. We're in a society that is just so rush, rush, hurry, hurry, be productive, produce, produce, you know, generate income 24 hours a day that we just, you know, really don't take time to just focus on the self. And I think that is a beautiful way to do. And a third one, I would say, would be, huh, so many. What can I choose? Oh, if you can't, yeah, retreat. I would say go outside, grounding. You know the art of earth thing, you know what I mean? Step outside, barefoot, put your feet Mm. in some bare earth, some Mm -hmm. grass, 
That feels so different. Charge up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The art of earthing, it kind of kind of sets your body. Like, say, for instance, you're jet lagged. If you're one who travels and you jet lag, what you can do is stand outside under the sunlight, barefoot and some not concrete and no socks on barefoot and just stand on the grass and just kind of just rub your feet, you know, charge up your body and just kind of reset, if you will. I think that's a great thing to do for any season. Yes, wintertime too. It might be cold for a second, but just go do it and just kind of reset your body. That's a yeah, great this, one. Yeah, that's, this is what's coming to mind right now. Okay. I might that's, think of this later, but this is what, what spirit has moved me to share with this podcast. Okay. I, I like it. <laughs> I like it. Def, definitely necessary. Yeah. You know, the, the season, the season is upon us, y'all. Get yourself outside. Yeah. Get, get for yourself sure. outside to yeah. touch some stuff. But it is. That's how I am. I go to the beach. I I just can't mm-hmm. wait but for the sand to get between yeah. my toes. Ooh, ooh. You know, and you can just, exfoliate and then rinse the girl. sea salt. Like, come on. Come you hear on. that, y'all? She just told you. So, little, little self care tip: what you can do with the beach at the beach. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just, sit, I just sit at the shore. You know, right there where land meets water. Like that's a portal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, like yeah. that's a magical space to be. Right there at the end of the cosmic ocean, if you will. Just yeah, just rub yourself with sand, which is eon. You can't even tell how old sand is. Just you know, just exfoliate your skin, and you know, sometimes we have rough heels, rough soul. Just Rub it in. <laughs> just rub Ooh, that's, love water. That, that's bliss. Ooh. Next time I go to the beach, I'm going to do that. I'm liking the name of my ancestors and Jamila. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I exfoliate. Yeah. I rub. I love mm. taking this sand. Mm-hmm. Okay. I say, you see, I'm touchy feely. I like to. I am too. I'm, so, touch. Yeah. I, I'm a hugger i hold people's hands i like yeah. crying with people like I, I i just love like human interaction connection that's, that's yeah. just yes yeah. connection is just everything for me yeah yeah it's yeah it is it's, it's just yeah. especially when the energy and the aura is right like, like yeah why would you not want to be a part of that yeah you know that yeah. that yeah Aww. Aww. Well, this is so great i'm so excited we're so definitely too. gonna have to to do this again some way yes. it's happening we are we yes. already got some stuff planned y'all we, we got some stuff going on next month so mm-hmm. we will be on the lookout for those details so yeah. what do you have going on what you got going on what's what's up with you right so, now my focus has been these retreats making sure i map mm-hmm. these retreats out perfectly retreats are my thing i'm still you know, offering my cookbook. I have my cookbook for sale. I do offer virtual cooking classes and that is it, which is kind of more than enough. And, yeah. you know, my family taking care of house and home and the people within it. That's what I got going on. These days. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, definitely more yeah. than enough and, and definitely let be part of all of that. So, yeah. um, where can these lovely women find you? Where, where can they, they get to know you, get to, to find out what's going on and be a part of that world? Ah, so you can find me at earthcandyarts.com, E-A-R-T-H-C-A-N-D-Y-A-R-T-S.com. Or if you do social media, Instagram, I'm earthcandyarts. You can go on there, put the link in my bio, and then that'll take you on to my page. And you can learn any and everything about me over there. Okay. All right. And I'll, again, I'll drop and share all that in the show notes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for thank you. honoring us with your time, your your energy, your wisdom, your words and connection. Seriously. Thank you, thank you for your consideration. Thank you for having me, Sabrina. I appreciate this. This is a Man. great start to my morning. Thank you. Right, right. Like it's yeah, it, it opens me up in a whole nother way for setting the tone for my day. So yeah. I hope it does the same for your other lovely ladies out there, whether it's a lunch break or the way you wrap up your day and i hope you enjoyed today's episode and until next time this is your habitual coach and have a great everything thank you for joining me on this week's episode of the habitual woman podcast please take a moment if you enjoyed the show to share with your family and friends and please leave a review. 
To learn more about the podcast and our community, you can go to the Habitual Woman Podcast.com. And until next time, this is Debrina Wright, your habitual coach, transforming habits into a lifestyle. <laughs>